Yeah. Well, as you may have noticed, I'm wearing one of my historical t-shirts. Mm -hmm. And just so we know exactly what, what we're talking about, that's the, there we that's go. the event. Oh, perfect. Right? Yes. And uh, this was a very significant event in early feminist, kind of like a capstone thing. Um, and every state had to have a commission for women, and they had all chosen the people to go to the to the national convention. This, the national convention was authorized by Congress and funded in part by the federal government. So this was very, yeah. an, an, a real an, an attempt to get feminism and so forth into the establishment, you know, because people yeah. had to be in the establishment or else some things aren't going to get up. Anyway, so... Um, I, I was there. I was not an authorized delegate. I went um, because of my position with Title IX, but I was not a voting delegate. Mm -hmm. However, um, the the um, voting the, the uh, one of the major issues was whether they were going to openly acknowledge the support of what were called in those days lesbian delegates, lesbian uh, organizations, yes, and so forth, are not. Still reverberating today. And yes. one of the most impassioned speeches that I remember hearing, I think was from a woman named West, and she actually had a position in the federal government, some sort of lower, middle level um, um, bureaucrat, and she said, I have worked all my life for the ERA. I have worked all my life, and I want this more than anything else. And I am very, very certain that if we include this emphasis or open this door, mm -hmm. that it will fail. And I'm afraid we have to um, take steps incrementally. And of course, this was somewhat the same kind of thing. With other things that had gone on in previous civil rights movements and so forth. Of, do you do you take half the half the pie? Or do you go for the whole pie and risk losing the whole pie, et cetera, et cetera? And um, she was voted down. And they did um, agree to have a, a broader outreach or whatever, the, except the endorsements of these other organizations or something. Mm -hmm. But that was a real a moment of crisis. And you could kind of see each person there kind of going over in their head, oh, yeah, this, what, what, what is it, you know? What am I going to do? How am I going? Am I going to vote yay or nay or nay? As I say, I was not a voting delegate, so I can, I don't have to say how I would have voted one way or the other. But that was a that was a real problem. Well, anyway, um, well, it was a it was a difficult it was a difficult decision, decision. I'm yeah. sure. You know, and um, well, anyway. So there were obviously, you know, many ERA marches, and there was the extension. They voted on the extension of the ERA, giving it more time, all this kind of thing. So I went to, uh, living here in Washington, you could hardly not go to these marches, and they were a lot of fun. And, um, you know, wearing white, wearing white dresses sometimes and putting on our, putting on our suffrage banners and, <laughs> and so forth. And one of them, I remember, um, it, it, you may recall it was a big deal about if you had the ERA, you'd have unisex bathrooms. God, the, the public would fall if we had unisex bathrooms. And so here it was, you know, we'd been there all afternoon and, and so forth, and, we're, and we, we really had to go, you know, and we really had to, and we were opposite the National Gallery of Art. So we said, well, let's go in there. And, of course, a lot of other women had that idea, too. And there was this long line waiting in front of the women's room. And, of course, there was nobody in front of the men's room. So a few of my friends and I decided that we would take over the men's room. <laughs> and it's, oh, my gosh, everything that they predicted about the, about the women's, if we, if we had the ERA, we'd have unisex bathrooms, and now, look, we're making it happen. <laughs> And somehow that by itself would be the downfall of yes, Western civilization. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, let's see. And then, of course, we have the last ERA march, which oh, well, was, yeah. yeah, there we are. So that was, it says here, 1981. 1981. Yeah. So that was the last one. There's the, the flyer for it, 1981. Oh. So, and unfortunately, it was the last ERA march. Yes. And so, and it's kind of interesting to think about how things would have been different had ERA passed. As you pointed out That's in earlier my... conversations, so many things were changing so fast that many of the things that ERA is supposed to accomplish were kind of happened. You know, the stuff on the ground happened. 
but philosophically there's still that big hole and um, I think that those of us of a certain persuasion really won't feel complete until that hole is, is plugged and that the Constitution does openly acknowledge that. Um, well, with good know, reason. Yeah. You know, it, it, um, I've had several conversations about the moment when, when this fight had to end for the time being. Mm -hmm. And um, the, you know, all of these women who had given years and years and years of their lives to one of the most obviously just causes I think anybody's ever taken up. Um, being told by a handful of people in a few states, really just a handful of votes, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're just not going to let you be legally all the way human. No, no, no. You know, just, just a few. Just not in that way. Right. Um, and I think to this day, a lot of people don't quite understand the implications of that. You know, mm -hmm. that you have you have a sitting Supreme Court justice who's perfectly happy to say, <laughs> no. I mean, if someone brings a, a suit, a civil suit. Um, on the basis of being a woman, I hate to tell you, but women are not in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. You're in a law. Yeah, yeah. You've got yeah. Title IX. Right, right. <laughs> You're in a law, a but that's point. not an amendment. That's, that's not, not the Constitution. That's not the and thing. so the, the, the ratification of your being is what is still missing right. in, you know, in our national mm -hmm. conversation. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's so, a really tough thing to, so. to right. sit with. Right. I don't know. No. Um, then just maybe a, a few more things about uh, the school system. Um, sure, so if you like. eventually, um, I've got this great <laughs> collection now. Oh, yeah, <laughs> right. Did we did we do that one? That was the one in '78. Oh, I guess we yeah. did the one in '81. Yeah. So yeah, that's there, the there were there were a lot. Let of me those. turn that camera just a little. Get the whole thing with you. Oh, that'd be yeah. such a great yeah. picture of you. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thanks. My past flash is in front of me. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, well, so, you know, we're talking about progress. And did we, did we make any progress? Was there any progress? Et cetera, et cetera. What happened to my red book? What happened to the red book? Here we are. So, oh, I didn't want the red book. I want the blue book. Um, so, anyway, about five years into this, I thought, well, we've got to have an update, you know, just to kind of keep people interested. And, uh, the progress on Title yeah, IX. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. So I did another. I went through and, and interviewed the same, um, not the same individuals, but the same groups of people that I had for the other for the other report. Oh, cool. And I decided that um, using the grading scale that was in um, uh, in uh, effect at the time, that we were good. We weren't excellent, but we were good. We had made good progress, oh, and that cool. was a that was a phrase that was used in the school system a lot. Mm -hmm. and all the child's making good progress, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we we did that. What had changed in those five years? Um, well, definitely um, things having to do with uh, curriculum and textbooks selections had become. There were a wider variety of people on the committees, and the materials that we had to choose from were much better. Mm. And certainly courses were open to, to everyone. There was, certainly was no kind of boys here, girls there kind of thing. There were still courses that were rather imbalanced, but they were imbalanced because of student choice. And that, of course, has to do with family pressure and culture. social and culture and everything. Right. But, you know, those kind of things do take time. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter was uh, in, she took computer science at McLean. And there was one class, and she was in that. And I went in for the um, student teacher conference, and she said, "Oh, you must be Amy's mother." And I, <laughs> "Oh, well, how do you know my daughter's?" And she said, "Well, there's only two girls in the class, and the other girl's Asian, so I think you must be Amy's mother." <laughs> it's a small pool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. But, um, and then, of course, the emphasis always uh, on the sports and the um, co-ed PE and so forth. I think um, at this point, co-ed PE. Teachers wouldn't even, I mean, like, they would be thinking, you what even are you think, even talking about? Yeah, you wouldn't the, even think of doing it another way. The sports teams things, in certain places, they do become issues sometimes if there's budget crunches and the degree of support. But again, uh, the Fairfax community is not some place that once they get this idea that, well, my daughter's going to Princeton, my daughter's going to, you know, my oh. daughter's getting a scholarship. There's no way that that kind of thing is, that kind of inequity is going to exist. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we were, I was fortunate to be working in a very, um, in a community for whom this idea 
of equality for the for girls and boys in an educational environment was certainly okay. Mm -hmm. So in that respect, my job was a lot easier than the other women that you've interviewed who were out there doing the hard politicking. Yeah, um, I, they were and I, will, I will certainly acknowledge that. That and of course one of the reasons my job was easier was because they were doing the hard politics. Yeah, so yeah, I'll acknowledge that too. <laughs> yeah, that's why you know the the many prongs at once, right? The many mm -hmm. many things at the same time. I think was really a beautiful aspect of the movement at that time. Yeah. You know, um, and the understanding that all of these things had to happen simultaneously. They were all valuable. You right. know, they, everybody they made it. respected each yeah. other's work, right. I think, in that way. So, But how did you find, you know, it's interesting, Fairfax County with its, you know, with its connections to D.C., to government, to um, being a place of, of, to this day, I mean, you know, sort of really advanced economic positions. Um, it's a pretty privileged place. Yes. So it thinks differently. It's yes. a little more connected internationally. It's a little more connected to the rest of the country because people move here with their cultural expectations. But the rest of the state is more rural. Um, it has different kinds of industries, parts of it are much more sort of um, just militarily dependent. Some are yeah. farming communities, some places used to be mining communities. Mm -hmm. um, some still are. And the culture is different and the attitudes yeah. are um, necessarily, I think, in some ways, mm -hmm. um, different than they are here. You yeah. know, Fairfax yeah. County is not normal Mm -hmm. anywhere. Right. Um, so you had, there were other women in other school districts, right, who yes. were working on this? What did they yes. encounter? Do you well, remember? Uh, well, we, we had um, some leadership from the state on, mm -hmm. uh, on, on this. As actually, a person that you need to interview is Eleanor Saslaw, who mm -hmm. is the wife of Dick Saslaw, who is the um, uh, head of the either majority or, or minority uh, leader of the Senate, depending upon whether the Republicans or the Which Democrats are in power. But anyway, he's a state legislator. And uh -huh. she was head of the state school board at one time, and also on the state commission for women, I believe. And there was a state commission for women, too. Yeah. And then we also had... Uh, like I was on another committee where we reviewed the standardized tests that were going to be given statewide. This was kind of before the SOLs, before the standard learning, okay. to see if the questions were biased in, in any way. Um, How and, did you check for that? Well, I'm not sure it was very scientific, but we yeah. just read the items and we sort of were trying to think now, how how would a would a boy kid respond to this differently than a girl kid, or would minority kids not get the point of this, or hmm. is this really a question where rural kids know all about this and city kids have never heard of this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> so I've seen that happen more than once in yeah. my life. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it was, as I say, not very scientific, but it was an effort. So all of these cool. little efforts kind of came together, I guess. Mm-hmm. But tried to try to put yourself in other perspectives and yeah, you know, and of course if you had a diverse group down. of people on the committee, of which there there were, uh, oh, then cool. it was easier for the, uh, to understand the other point of view. Yeah, so. yeah. So. so the whole state was really implementing these efforts. Well, the, pretty informally. Well, I'm, I couldn't I couldn't speak to that at all. Mm. No, in fact, maybe that's a good reason for you to talk to Eleanor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'll try. She to originally her. was a um, guidance counselor in Fairfax County Schools, and you know, did other things. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. and cool. Um, I will track her yeah, down. Yeah. Send her a lovely letter. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I think that's kind of um, a good many of the perspectives that I have to offer on what my association was. I I felt very fortunate that I had this job, which had, a, in the beginning, a great deal of freedom, just because it had never been done before, mm -hmm. and that I was being paid to do work that I would like to have been doing anyway, because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here I could go and talk to people and try and persuade them to my point of view and get paid for it, whereas before, when I was just a you know, citizen activist kind of person, I was doing it, you know, on my own. So that was nice. Yeah. But it was, it was, it was fun. That's a wonderful mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Did you work on Title IX your whole career? Well, uh, in German, we have an expression, ja und nein, jein. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and then I, I was with the same, it was basically in the same position for 27 years, but about every five years, 
the school system reorganized and somehow or another the focus of the job was different. So we used to be the human relations department and then we became the office of equity and compliance and when we, we used to do a lot with school with schools and curriculum and then we shifted almost exclusively to personnel and hiring and firing and complaints and that kind of thing. So I had a lot of different experiences. I never got bored. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. yeah. Well if you're if you're happy with the I think, I information think we, yeah. that you've given us, then right. we can... Yes, and I've, it's been fun to share these, these things that have yeah. been sort of gathering dust on my bulletin board for all these years. Yeah, that was a real <laughs> trove. I'm so glad you took me downstairs to yeah. look at those. Actually, <laughs> the two posters um, got given to the, um, uh, the Smithsonian at one time. Mm -hmm. I have no idea if, the, if they're on display. I, I doubt it, but they did collect some things having to do with the early days of Title IX, and um, I think... I think my two, I remember sending my two posters into them anyway. Oh, great. Yeah. Good to know that they're archived then. I think so. Yeah. One of these days so. when we get our own museum. Yeah, yeah. Thing, right? <laughs> oh, we get our a, women's it's history amazing. It's amazing. The, the women who move, talk about women working on something their whole entire life, there are people who've been doing that and they keep getting so close and then it's the end of the session and then they have mm -hmm. to start over again. And then this last one, I thought they were really right there and then some administrative thing happened and now they kind of aren't again so yeah yeah it's always just within a hair's breadth uh -huh. you know a building for our history yes you know exactly leaders yeah. well thank you uh -oh. thank You're you welcome. a very great oh. deal for well, the afternoon it's well, been really you. wonderful I enjoyed it yeah nice thank to get to know you thank you <laughs> that's really nice to say <laughs>